in order to create this part, we need a setup in HSM works. We call it a new job. And we're doing a milling operation. It's going to try to figure out based on the geometry of your part and where you drew it. See how our Z is now pointing up for this part. We can enter a fixed size box for our part based on what sort of uh, material that we have. So right now, I want my height of my material to be one inch. The Y direction, some of the material that I have, I have some two inch stock that's by five. So we'll use a two by five by one inch stock. I can cut this to whatever length and know that my Y is some standardized material. I like having this centered on the whole part here, but for the Z, I'm not going to center it. I'm going to offset it from the top. And I'm going to say 0.1. And then I know that I took off 0.1 from this whole part. So later when I go to flip it to cut the rest of the part out, I have all that extra material. Uh, and I know exactly how much I took off. So if we look at the stock setup, I am 0.1 inches below. I'm going to use the center of my part to set this up. Since I'm rough cutting out of a block of material, if I'm a little off in the X and Y, it doesn't totally matter. But I can use an edge finder to find this edge, this edge, and cut them in half, this edge, this edge, cut them in half, and then put my Z right on top of the material. So any cut I have, is going to go into a negative direction in the material. From here, it's asking us for a work coordinate system, and we can pull that from the stock orientation. And again, I like having that part right there on the top there, top center. You don't need to worry about a machine or a post processor. We'll do that later, and we'll add in a post processor. If you need to add in a program name, this is a good time to do it. Everything you export will have this name to it. We'll use a zero work offset, which will automatically choose the first offset in your program. So for us, it would be like G54. I'll hit check. And we can see that we're now working on this plane for this setup, and we've opened up a whole bunch of options here. Stock simulation allows you to show a selected toolpath and with the stock being cut out, and we can simulate the toolpath as well. All right, notice that I'm in my CAM Manager tab, and I've got a job here. When I click that, I get this whole block of the stock that we put in. And again, our X is in the long direction, our Y is in the short direction, and our Z is pointing up from the top. We're gonna get started. We're gonna use that quarter inch end mill for everything just to show what we can do. And the first step is to face off that 0.1 material. So we'll click 2D milling face, and it asks us for a tool, and we'll click our flat end mill, and we'll hit select. It automatically puts in our speeds and feeds for this part. So we'll move over to the next tab. It's looking for what do we want to cut, and we don't want to touch anything in this tab because we're going to cut the entire piece of stock. We'll go to the next tab. It's asking us for our heights. I think in HSM it's nice to start from this bottom tab and work your way up. So the bottom is our model top. That's exactly what we want. The top of our part is going to be the stock top, so that's this here. The feed height where we start to engage the tool is going to be 0.2 above this top height, which is the stock top. Our retract height to have a safe distance right here is going to be 0.2 above that last height. And then our retract height is this guy up here, and that's 0.4 above this uh, clearance retract height. Okay, so we're going to leave all those as is. 
and move to the next tab. In this tab, we're looking at the number of passes. If you highlight over something and you're not sure what it is, HSM does a really good job of showing you and explaining what each of these things are and how to adjust them. For the tolerance, we're not gonna change anything. Okay, and I'm gonna rotate my part so you can see. Our step over is how far the bit passes over itself. Having a larger step over enables you to cut faster, but it gives you a rougher pass. So right now it's pretty heavy. I'm just gonna lower that a little bit and you're welcome to play with that value. Uh, I think 70% of the diameter of the tool is about a good number. It wants a degree, you can change the rotation of the step over. So if you want like a 45 degree, and then as you work your way down, we can extend past the part to make sure we clear it. This is actually really good for us right now. So we're gonna extend the diameter of the tool. So we make sure we clear all the stock and then we'll come back, okay? This last is the stock offset. We can make it look like the stock um, is a little bit larger on each of the sides if we'd like. We don't wanna go in both directions for this facing operation because the end mill only goes one way. If you look at HSM does a really good job of showing you in regular manual milling, the way you have to remove chips from the material is a little bit different. So when you're doing a conventional milling operation, you're actually pulling the chips through the material in climb milling with the CNC because of the way that it feeds into the material. We actually want to do uh, pull the chips through the cut. Okay, so if you look at the two diagrams, we're not feeding material into the stationary cutter, we're moving the cutter into stationary material. So make sure that you select climb milling for this operation. If you do both ways, it's gonna cut on the back side of the cutter and then cut on the front side of the cutter, then cut on the back side of the cutter, then cut on the front side. In some cases when we're using carbide tooling, this isn't a problem, but for this end mill, it's just gonna rub on the back of the cutter and not look good. And from the other side, it just flips the point at where you start. And, and we'll see when we go to simulate what we want. If you select both sides, again, it's gonna try to cut from both sides of the, the material. Uh, let's move to our next tab. Uh, we could leave uh, some stock on the top if we wanted to go back and do a nicer finishing pass, but in, this is a tool. We don't totally care about the final uh, look of the part. All right, for linking, this is how a tool moves from one place to another. So that movement from the end of the part to starting over on the passes is is going to be the the linking. It asks us how do we how do we want to deal with this? We've got a couple uh, options. We're just going to preserve rapid movement. So it's pretty standard. We just wanted to move back and forth. I want to add in extend before retract. That means it's going to pass over our part and then come up versus starting to come up as it finishes the move. We can rapid retract to sort of speed up the process. It's asking us to keep the tool down and that's a good, for this part, that's a good option. And then a lead in and lead out. So as the tool enters, we add a little bit of a lead in and we'll see that. The last thing we're gonna do is go back to the passes tab. See where it says multiple depths? We'll check multiple depths and it's asking us how deep we wanna go. We never want to clear uh, if the tool is in full engagement more than half the diameter. So in this case, I'm just gonna do a lot less just so we can show I'm only taking point one off so this should take two passes I'll hit OK and we can see my facing operation I've got two Z passes and I've got a whole bunch of maneuvers so we can go to simulate and we can check this out where it's showing the the tool here we can enable that we want to show the tool path so we can see what we're cutting you can also click show stock, so it's showing this. 
if you don't like seeing the actual part inside of here and you want to see what it does you can click that uh, in your you can click the visibility in your normal design tree so just click down and then for your solid bodies you can right click and hide solid body and it'll just show you what you're cutting out of the material All right, if you want to see it hit play and you can watch it cut through I'm going to pause this because it doesn't like simulating and recording video at the same time. Once you're done with simulation, you can hit check. If you've lost your part, go back to your design tree and right click your body and show. And that'll bring your part back up. Then you can go all the way back to your, your job. We've now just set up a facing operation to clean off the top side of this part. I have one thing to edit I noticed in the simulation. I actually want to start from this bottom corner. So you can right click, click edit, and then go back through your tabs. In the linking tab, or I'm sorry, in the passes tab, I actually want to uncheck from other side. I forgot to do that. And then hit OK. It'll reprocess uh, your thing, and then this is good. I want to cut from this side. So now that I have all my facing, operations done. I've taken hopefully 0.1 material off the top and I have a flat side. I'm going to do the profile cut of this part. 